Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Edmund DeVoe, president of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association. Welcome to another segment of Lunch and Learn. We welcome you. We uh, encourage you to use the chat feature to share your business information, network there, uh, post some questions as they come up. And uh, we'll be getting started with our wonderful guest, Dawn Morris of Proteus, in just a moment. But first, I want to thank our sponsors. Let me get my sponsor list. <laughs> I apologize. I usually have that at the ready. <laughs> okay, here are our sponsors. Proteus 420, <laughs> Financial <laughs> Resources, Federal Credit Union, Sachs LLP, Burton Trent Public Affairs, Cureleaf, Garden State Green Energy, Dutchie, Puffin Entrepreneurs and Investors, Sprague, Sprague Energy, our preferred energy partner, the Sheet Metal Workers, Local, local Union 19, and uh, We'll, we'll also like to uh, point out some of our upcoming events. On Tuesday, February 28th, join us in Voorhees, New Jersey with Archer Griner, the law firm Archer Griner. They're hosting us. Don't uh, forget that uh, our corporate counsel, Bill Caruso, is a partner at Archer. Join us Tuesday, February 28th for an in-person networking event. Yes, we're going to be celebrating lifting the cap. Officially, the cap has been lifted on cultivation facilities. I know there's been a lot of discussion about that. Check out some of the conversation on LinkedIn. But uh, join us Tuesday, February 28th. Please register. We'd love to see you there. And also, don't forget, big event, April 12th. April 12th, we will be having a, another large seminar forum type event. Get, getting your license? Now what? We're going to have a number of panels discussing what it takes for you to actually uh, get your cannabis business up and running. Have a number of panels, a number of great panelists. So please join us in person April 12th at Galloping Hill Golf Club. With that, I now want to introduce our wonderful guest. Dawn Morris is co co-founder and owner of Proteus 420. Uh, we thank you so much, Dawn, for your sponsorship and for taking time out to be with us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to you to uh, tell us all about Proteus 420 and what it is that you do for our cannabis community. Hi, and thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be a part and a sponsor for the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association. Uh, again, as uh, as, I, as you guys were told, my name is Dawn Morris. I am the CMO and co-founder of Proteus 420. We are a full seed to sale uh, technology, organizational business, and software for the cannabis industry. A uh, little bit of history about Proteus 420. We are one of the original uh, three softwares that came into the space. We have been servicing the cannabis industry since 2008. We worked with the very first Prop 215 and 64 licenses in the state of California. Uh, as an East Coast girl myself, I'm from Philly originally, so I always give a shout out and try to take care of my uh, tri-state people, my New Jersey, New York, and Philadelphia peeps. <laughs> um, we are so excited to be uh, uh kind of enveloped in our software side of things now with, especially with all of the changes that are happening in New Jersey. Uh, we've got some changes coming up in Pennsylvania as well. And then all of the ever-changing things that are happening in New York. Um, but what I wanted to talk about with everybody today was the way to utilize technology and data as a business owner in cannabis. Um, and the reason being is because is a lot of technology and or lack of technology it affects the cannabis industry and your company as well as your employees. So what I wanted to kind of touch on today, and I welcome any questions that anyone may have, um, is basically discussing how does technology affect cannabis companies, um, how reporting and data for the sectors of the industry are affected, uh, more importantly, keeping your company and employees safe with the data that you have, because I always tell people, always remember your data is only as secure as yours and your employees' pa passwords. <laughs> 
um, the benefits of technology in the workplace and how to prepare for proper business technology. Because a lot of, a lot of what you do and how you do your business, and especially in cannabis, is going to be reflected in what it, the changes will be coming up, especially for New Jersey, as the compliance and the regulations change. Because we do know that we're in an emerging marketplace and, um, and a lot of what we're going to be seeing and how we're going to be uh, working through this is being able to be very flexible and very adaptable in the technology space. So let's talk about how technology affects cannabis companies, and it doesn't really matter what vertical you're in, whether you're a cultivator, manufacturer, distributor, or retail point of sale. Um, how you work has been vastly affected by technology, technological advancements. So when we talk about computers and software, these are all various tools that help people um, do what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. But over the last few decades, we haven't really had a lot of the same access from the size of our company versus you know, the new emerging markets like cannabis. So from the way you take and tackle tasks on how you communicate with your coworkers, technology will create a lot of ripple and a lot of change um, that will benefit you as a cannabis company. So when we think about where we were even five years ago or 10 years ago, how many of us here can say that, you know, we've grown through technology, right? How many of us, I mean, I'm going to age myself, I'm 53 now, but I still remember having a little tiny Mac square in my, in my school and being able to say, oh, wow, I'm going to be able to write programs and DOS programs. And, you know, and now here we are and everything has emerged to existing and living on the internet, which wasn't even anything that we could have possibly imagined 25, 30 years ago. So when we think about what tech does, we used to take longer time to spend on individual tasks. Communication was a very much, uh, it was much more complex and tedious. And managing data and how you created your workflow was done manually and involved a ton, a ton of paperwork, right? So when we work with tech, we have a lot of new tools that are able to make our jobs faster and easier. Communicating with customers, vendors, and employees, no matter where you are in the world, is incredibly flat, fast and convenient now. And everything is digital. Um, it's easier to file. It's more secure, share, and or keep track of. So when we talk about the cannabis space, we talk about inventory, right? Because at the end of the day, two things are very important for us in the cannabis industry, making sure that inventory does not walk out that door and making sure that cash does not walk out that door as well. It's amazing how quickly um, people forget that it doesn't matter if it's t-shirts or cannabis, the end of the day is always going to be cash and inventory, right? We're talking about very large cash heavy inventory flows. We still don't have a lot of banking available to us yet in the cannabis industry. So when we think about that, the technology that we have and that we utilize or put in place has to be able to handle the large influx of in and out of cash as well as inventory. So when we think about inventory, we think about production, uh, projections, product availability, expirations of products, uh, as well as, a, like I said, loss prevention. But on the other side of inventory is the consumer side of it, right? So what's the product performance? Top sales and top products, cost versus margin. What are you paying for a product versus what you are selling it for? Um, forecasting and budgeting. How are you going to prepare for a product that has been sitting on the shelf? How are you going to get it out uh, the door? And then inventory adjustments. So when we think about product production and product performance, as well as inventory, those will always go hand in hand with each other. Right. So when we talk about the technology that we have and the technology that we're utilizing, we should be able to get those key components out the door or in, in our hands so that we as business owners can make valuable decisions about our business growth, what our trends are and things like that. And when I talk about data, a lot of times I always tell people your data should always remain in your hands, right? Because when we think about what reporting and data is, there are so many types of operations that start stacking on top of other softwares. And every time you stack, you're getting further and further away from the data points that belong to you. Every time you add a stackable software, um, anytime you type, start adding different things that have to work with a particular type of software or technology, 
what happens is, is that data point now is another terms of conditions and you're getting further and further away from the originating point of data, right? So how scary is that to know that at some point your data is going to be out there and you're not in control of it? More importantly, you're not the owner of it any longer. So when we talk about that, we talk about that because that's customer data and any of the technologies that you put into play for your business and your cannabis business in, in particular is going to have a lot of consumer data, whether you are a cultivator and your consumer is another business or you are a retail delivery and your consumer is actually John down the street or your neighbor or even some of your employees. So what is some of the information that we need to be able to get out of our technology from that customer base to be able to know how I'm selling? What's the top selling items? And those come in from top purchaser reports, expired driver's license and or recommendations, um, customer buying trends. What is happening now? What was hot a month ago may not be hot now. I know if we look at buying trends for last year, Vape cartridges were very high sellers at the beginning of the year, but as we moved in towards the end of the year, we started to notice that rosin extracts, uh, infused pre-rolls seem to be more of the top selling items. And so when you have that type of information in your technology stack and or your technology software partner, that information should be able to be garnered to you so that you can sit down and say, how do I take this information and how do I actually make better business decisions so that my consumer knows I'm purchasing product that they want and that they may need? Uh, more importantly is how long is it sitting on those shelves and are we getting close to expiration dates before we sell it? One of the worst things we could do as business owners, and especially cannabis business owners, is buying per purchasing product that's sitting on the shelf and isn't moving. So when we have a lot of that data in our hands, that comes to parts of being able to allow us to make better business decisions. You know, and last Dawn, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, I just wanted to jump in because everything that you're sharing, and I want people to have a moment to uh, actually digest a, a lot of mm -hmm. these points. Uh, so I'll start at the top. Number one, I love what you're sharing because uh, as we at the Cannabis Business Association have been talking about, it is the age of normalization for the cannabis industry. Right. So what you're bringing is you're, you're fast forwarding normalization, right? This This isn't, this is no longer uh, about uh, just can I grow the best weed, right? This right. is we are we are moving out of our mom's basement, right? We're moving we're moving right. from shed in the backyard. We're now talking about an industry. So you are talking about a a stage or a piece of this normalization process. Mm -hmm. Also hitting uh, and I love it about the business of cannabis. Again, as the state's cannabis chamber of commerce. We are talking about business, right? Yes. This, this is this is so important. This is not you and your buddies pulling together some type of shop and letting things go uh, in a fly by night sense, right? You, we're talking about uh, product control. Uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're about inventory control. We're talking about uh, what is it? First in. Uh, first in, first out. Yeah, FIFO, right? right? FIFO, FIFO, first in, first out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm digging deep into my re retail roots here. Uh, FIFO and, and and LIFO, and so uh, th these are these are, are are all incredible points. And I see a, a question from Monica. So just to let the the audience know, after today, uh, in a in a day or two, we do post uh, this recording on our YouTube channel. So thank you, Monica. Uh, we, we do wanna make sure that that the industry gets uh, all of this great information. Uh, so Dawn, uh, just to last, last thing I'll say, and I'll let you get back uh, to your talking points. Um, wh when, we, when we do talk about the, the information, the data, so what is it that, do, does Proteus hold that data? Do you, uh, do you hold it for your customers? Uh, are you the the storage place for that data, or uh, is it is it a cloud thing? Uh, if you could <laughs> tell a little bit more about what Proteus does as you help, whether it's a retailer, or a cultivator, or manufacturer, uh, collect that data. What what happens to it, and what does Proteus do with it? 
Well, and that's a great question. And thank you for asking. But just to really kind of, I want to rewind just a bit. Um, we'll we'll talk the word. You guys are going to hear the word data and data. I say it a couple different ways. You're going to hear me say that quite a bit because at the end of the day, one of the most important pieces of everything you do in your cannabis business is the data aspect of it. So let's talk about what Proteus does. Proteus is what's called an ERP system. Now, you'll see a lot of softwares out there that claim to be an ERP. What an ERP is, is an enterprise resource planning software. What does that mean to a business owner who maybe just is getting into this? Um, it just means that we are going to take all of your information and we are going to store it in what is our cloud-based system. Now, we are a zero contract. That means our, our system is month to month. We don't lock anybody into any type of long-term contracts because at the end of the day, we want people to be confident. We want them to trust and value the information that they are being able to store and see. But we take it from all aspects of the business. So we start with the cultivators, then we move to the manufacturers and producer processors to the distributors and out to the retail point of sale and delivery houses. We work in between with different aspects of it as far as um, you know the CRM and the CMS. But an ERP, in order to be an ERP, you have to have certain things that are built in, meaning you have to have the information that is standard, right? Inventory, customer vendors, right? Those are the three main things that you, who are you selling to, who are you buying from, and what is the inventory count that you have on hand? The That's where a lot of tools and a lot of softwares will end. And then they'll go in and they'll add a point of sale on top of it. Then anything outside of that usually has to be called what we call stackable software, meaning it's not something that's built into their system and that you start getting into overhead cost um, so they may get you in for a couple hundred bucks a month, but then by the end of the day, when you start stacking everything you need to run your business, you're going to be a couple grand out um, in order uh, per month and probably locked into a long term contract in order to satisfy their vendors um, or their VCs, right? Their their capital, their venture capitalists or their uh, the type of money that's coming into there. So what we do is we have decided, you know, we took a strong point in where we were coming into this industry and we saw what was going to be happening, not only from a legalization standpoint, but from a long perspective of working in high risk functionalities in the tobacco and the alcohol industries for as long as we have. We've also worked in healthcare for over 25 years. So knowing that there was going to be very strict regulations and this emerging market was going to take a little bit longer than the average bear. It's not like t-shirts, right? Or hats. <laughs> um, so what we decided to do was to kind of go from the forefront and saying, why should you have to stack things and why should it cost X amount more for people to run their business? Why can't they, why can't the mom and pop shop have the same information that say a multi-state or multi-location operation would have with hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to be able to spend in marketing. Someone who has $100 versus 100,000 should be able to play in the same pool. So what we did is we came in and we said, we're gonna do a full ERP. Um, we're gonna take our business acumen and we're gonna put it into the software. And that means that we're gonna take every aspect of the industry, seed to sale, right? Cultivation to retail uh, and delivery. And on top of that, integrate the things that are gonna be very important for them. We're talking about accounting and financials. We're talking about um, CMS and CRM information, being able to communicate with the customer as well as the vendor uh, and track all of that information in one point of system, one, one value point of system. And that's what Proteus is. Um, we are the we are the start and the end of your business, really, when it comes down to information. So you have an opportunity to come in as a small one-off mom and pop shop but then have the ability to stay with the same software as you grow to be a multi-location and potentially a multi-state operation. Um, and that's where we kind of are different from most of the other systems out there. We're just not an inventory and we're just not a point of sale. And those two tied together, we're a business platform. So, um, so when we talk about uh, something that, you know, like Monica or not Monica, but Ed had said about technology, we came into the cannabis market space with the ideology that at the end of the day, everything is going to be uh, profit centric and it's going to need to be inventory centric. So in this case with cannabis, cannabis cash, 
cannabis inventory. Why should we operate any different? Just because it's cannabis, it doesn't mean that the business operations are any different. It just means it's a little bit harder for us to maneuver in the space. So being able to look at those maneuverabilities for the business owner and be able to make give them the information and again that data that's going to allow them to make a better business decision about how they're going to run their business because let's let's be real i mean let let's talk honest information right because when we talk about the information that works tracking we're tracking from a consumer base. We're tracking names, addresses, driver's licenses, recommendation numbers. That all has to be encrypted. It has to be stored. It has to be secure. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to progress through and building a trust and a value with your consumers to be able to sell to them. On the other side, from the business side of it, being able to utilize a proper technology that allows your management to provide information to the owners as well as the uh, employees. You have sales consultants on all aspects of the front of cannabis. And so when we think about employee productivity and management information, it all comes down to that data. How are you going to explain to your owner operators or your, your venture capitalists, the people who've invested in your business, how are you going to be able to tell them what is selling, why it's selling, what's not selling, why that's not selling, how you're communicating with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis. Every point of that um, is a data point that's going to allow you to see how your business is doing as it grows. And look, let's, like I said, let's be real. 2023 is going to be a rough year for cannabis. Um, you know, with New Jersey and the rules and the regulations and the segmentation that's happening around it in New York and Pennsylvania, we've got a battle that's happening in Pennsylvania with information and data right now with a technology partner that they were locked into. That's, they have now exited the cannabis market as a whole. So now you've got another point of interest that's coming into play. So that's going to feed into the contracts that are in place there. And guess what? That affects how the market interacts in the states around it. Um, you know, I'm currently in California. And so for me, what I turn is what I see is all the regulations that are happening now in California and how it's actually dropping the price of per pound for cannabis, which is not a good thing. Um, I, it's not a good thing for the, the cultivators or the manufacturers because what's happening is, is now they can't sell their product out and the con because the consumer value is dropping, right? So we're also looking at potentially hitting a recessional area this year um, with cannabis. Everything that happened in the last five years here, we've had such a huge, large influx of investor funds and money that have come in. It has over conflated and over inflated the cannabis market. And on top of that, where we were two and a half, three years ago with COVID, the buying trends are not what we would expect to have as a normal or marginalized area of data. Um, so what we're looking at is, is overinflation. We've got a marketplace that is that is potentially starting to drop down and crash. It's a good thing to happen. It's a new emerging market. We want to see that inflation. We want to see that that construct come up. It's going to push a lot of money and the things that we needed in this marketplace to start making the argument of deregulization and rescheduling for this level one drug. Um, but for us to be able to say, look, crime has dropped in the areas where you have your cannabis businesses because we have high levels of security. We have high levels of uh, information tracking and storage. We're, we're not just t-shirts because if t-shirts went missing, okay, we call our insurance company. Cannabis has to operate a lot differently because we have to make sure it's not ending up on the streets, right? So when we talk about that, we've always taken those security measures and that's where technology has kind of been a, a big boom. We've got people starting to come into this industry now that are seeing, oh, you know, I thought this, you know, the green rush. I will tell you how many times I've heard people say that this is the green rush and it made my stomach turn because I'm <laughs> like, no, no, no. I mean, you know, I think about the years... I grew up, my dad was a grower in Philadelphia, so I call him the concrete grower, right? He had the tomato plants and then he had the, the marijuana plants behind it. I think I was the only kid on the street that loved tomatoes. And I think it was because I spent most of my time in cross-pollinated tomatoes. <laughs> 
but my dad um you know he used to say he's like you know this is still a business it just it's a business that the government can't figure out how to control and that's why it's taking us longer to get into this we're going to run along the same routes that prohibition did with alcohol so we're going to have to jump through a lot more hoops we're going to have to go through that which means this industry is going to have to see a crash and a major crash which is going to potentially lead from a recession to depression type style for cannabis. And that's information that your technology should be able to give you, right? I tell people all the time, um, with every software that's out there that you're running your business, ask the company if they're using their business to run their own business. I can tell you, I have three companies that I run and they're all technology. And every single one of my businesses, I use Proteus to run my businesses. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason being is, is because I can get the data and the information out of it that I need so that I know where trends are happening, where potential drop-offs will happen. More importantly, how I'm going to build my company's growth through those different hurdles. And those are things that you should be able to get out of the information that you're working with right now. So that's kind of where we come in. Um right. I would love to answer questions. I'm I'm a really off the cuff person and I could sit here and talk and talk for days because, you know, that's what I do and I love doing that. But I would love to know how um, some of the, the people here, what are some of the pain points that you guys are running into with your data and your information? How are you struggling and what type of struggle are you having to get information what information do you think is important to you? Well, well, Dawn, I'll I'll jump in here because uh, I, I will dare say that uh, our viewers are either applicants, mm. new license, or new license holders. Perfect. So there hasn't been a creation or an establishment of either a retailer or a cultivator uh, since the license process started last year. So these are all uh, future data users, and these are all future. Uh, data compilers for you. That's uh, so huge. So think about that from a technology standpoint. How do you prepare for technology in your new business, right? Because there's a couple of things that you're going to need when you go out the gate. When you're applying for your license, people are going to say, do you have your SOPs? That's going to be the first thing is, is, do you have SOPs in place, which are standard operating procedures? Standard operating procedures don't have to be any, they don't have to be beautiful. They can just be a couple of lines here and there, but it's basically, here's my business. Here's how I plan to run it. And here are the things that I need in order to run my business. If I am a grower, I need to know how I'm going to do my grow room. Here's my lights. How am I going to track my yields? If I'm a manufacturer, how, what am I processing? What am I, am I doing extractions? Am I creating, am I bringing in bulk flour? And am I making other product? Am I making it as a bulk product flour? And am I going to break it down in to distillate? Am I going to start getting into those different level of high level extractions? Ice water hash is a really big thing that's happening here on the West Coast right now. And a lot of people are starting to see that in the creation of their edibles, that getting ice water hash is a much more smoother, effective um, high for more of your edibles, you're getting a more of a consistent level. So those are things that you need to think about in your standard operating procedures and your technology should be able to have a data management tool that allows you to store those SOPs so that you can modify and extrapolate those as you need to. Um, how are you bringing in, you know, um, from a technology standpoint, bringing in valued and hardworking and trustworthy employees? And I'm going to say that again, because I always to say for the people in the back, bringing in valued, hardworking and trustworthy employees, because one of the things and it doesn't matter what industry you're in, those are the things that everyone seems to be struggling with the most, right? You know, it's great if you can hire your cousin Frida, um, you know, and she's going to come in and work, but you better have a really good tight, you know, dot your I's, cross your T's types of contracts with them because they may be friends and family. But when you get into the business aspect of things, a lot of those things have to be covered to CYA, cover your ass. <laughs> So Dawn, uh, with, yeah, yeah. So, so with that, if you would please uh, put in the chat uh, how our uh, guests can reach you, and uh, and then this way, as uh, questions come up and and future uh, conversations, they can reach out to you directly. Uh, in the meantime, I once again want to thank our sponsors: Financial Resources Federal Credit Union, Sachs LLP, Burton Trent Public Affairs, Cure Relief. 
Garden State Green Energy, Dutchy, Puffin Entrepreneurs and Investors, Sprague Energy, our preferred energy partner, and the Sheet Metal Workers Local Union 19. Uh, once again, I want to remind everyone, Tuesday, February 28th, please uh, join us in Voorhees at the Archer Griner Law Firm. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Please register. Come on out. In-person networking. Nothing beats a handshake and a smile. <laughs> also, uh, much of what Dawn was uh, touching upon will be covered at our April 12th seminar and forum. Got your license? Now what? Much of what Dawn shared today is about the now what. So we would love to have you there in person, April 12th at the Galloping Hill Golf Club. Uh, join us there for hours of informational sessions. So Dawn, I again, want to thank you for being here, being a, a sponsor of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association. A ton of wealth, a ton of information. Uh, I love one of your last points. Uh, you're not just the founder, but you're a customer, right? Uh, exactly. So using your own uh, products and services uh, says a lot about uh, what you're doing. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. So Dawn, any closing thoughts? I'm going to just say very quickly that science and technology are things that revolutionize our lives, right? From everything, even the first man on the moon, it was all science and technology. So business and business data should be provided um, in that forefront and it should give you peace of mind. So you should always feel a level of calmness and a level of understanding. If you are frustrated with the software, it's not the software for you. So always understand that it should give you a peace of mind in your business information. Excellent. Again, Dawn Morris of Proteus 420, a member, corporate <laughs> member of the New Jersey Canada Business Association. I'm Edmund DeVoe, president of the association. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you being here. Reach out to Dawn. She put her information in the chat. We look forward to seeing you uh, Tuesday at our in-person networking event in Voorhees. And also, I'm going to uh, let you know, next Friday's Lunch and Learn, you definitely want to tune in. Very special guest uh, appearing. Uh, it will be a wealth of information next Friday. Uh, stay tuned. Check out our LinkedIn, our Instagram, our Facebook, and uh, you will definitely get some uh, good information there. So I look forward to seeing everyone Tuesday and certainly at uh, our uh, Lunch and Learn next Friday. Tune in and certainly April 12th. Again, Dawn Morris of Proteus 420, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Take care and we'll see everyone soon. Enjoy your weekend. Bye, everybody.